At From the Middle, we recognize the unsettlement brought to the forefront of our nation through the current events. For some, this is a complicated issue with many moving parts. For others, it's a clear-cut look into reality. And still, others struggle to know how to think, speak, or even make sense of it all. Each of our experience on this planet is different, informed by where we live, what we look like, the people around us, and countless other influences. So while we might not know the best answers or practices, or even lack the experience to make informed decisions, we do want to see healing for our nation and world. As we watch and listen to the events around us, we find it important to remind ourselves and one another of a few words that will hopefully inform our attitudes toward all citizens of humanity whom we believe God created with equal passion to ourselves. Love, respect, and compassion. Sorry, just clearing my Mountain Dew hole. I got my phone hole clean today. That's where you keep it? You're so cerebral and you're so developed and evolved. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of From the Middle. This is episode number 52. I am one of your hosts, Kendall Alala, joined by the brothers Corey and Dylan Hubble. And we are just pleased and excited and ecstatic to be to be uh, broadcasting this from our homes again. Instead of... <laughs> there is just nothing like... Like being home, am I right, folks? <laughs> Anybody? Oh, except like the, for Corey. <laughs> I feel like the odd man out here. <laughs> I started to say it, and then I, and then I realized that Corey is not at home. He's doing something much cooler. But uh, I continued with my little shtick anyway. That said, let's start. Let's start there, Corey. Oh, we are three yeah. middle class guys, right? And we yeah, live in we middle are. America, middle, uh, that, that. something. And uh, we like to be funny, but sometimes serious, but mostly funny and stupid and goofy. That's perfect. Okay. Just yeah. like I wrote it. <laughs> Corey. Yes. You're not at home. No. Where are you? I am coming at you live from Topsail Island, North Carolina. I'm in a condo right now. My kids are sleeping in the back master bedroom area, and I'm going to try to be as quiet as possible, which for me, when I'm talking on the phone or doing a video conference is next to impossible because I'm a loud talker and I laugh a lot when I (laughs) hang out with you guys. And so um, they're all over there sleeping. (laughs) And you have extra hair on your face. Can you? Yeah. Let's get a close up of the of the twist. There it is. See that? That's that little baby awesome has been born. This is day 80, 86 or something of this beard. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm starting to, I can actually start to. That's fun. Oh, my wife hates it. And even though Corey and his family left and they're on vacation, his hair is still on quarantine. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's kind of fun just to see how long. How long I can get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what I was saying, but cool. (laughs) Anyway, what's up with you guys? Yeah, I'm in North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina. (laughs) What are you guys doing? What are you up to, Dylan? Home still, like you uh like your lovely preface to our episode. Uh home, recording off the iPad today, and uh, you know. Not in our luxurious studio like I would choose to be if possible, but uh, soon. Yeah, soon. Very soon. Soon. Times they are a changing. <laughs> the times. That's like that song. That's probably why you that, said it. Something from music or history. I don't remember. Yeah. I figure most of us are, well, I mean, a lot, a lot fewer of us are stuck at home these days. Um, <clears throat> I've mentioned this before as far as like 
day to day, like where we spend in the bulk of our day, our life hasn't really changed all that much. Uh, so I'm still home, but I will say this, that it's, I, I have pretty bad allergies and they're, they're like asthma related. Um, which, uh, which makes them super special annoying. Uh, this past week has been really the first week that I've been able to spend any time outside. And so for me, it's like spring has just started for me and, and our family has been outside and like, it, it's just been, it's been a phenomenal week. Like I, I, no joke, most of our meals have been grilled and we've eaten them outside. We've been doing all kinds of landscaping projects outside. We've gotten a lot of work done. Um, we actually have five cubic yards of mulch still piled up in our driveway because it's, wow. we're like, we're like changing things. It's not just topping anything. Like it's, we're making changes <laughs> and, uh, and so no, it's been it's been good. It's been fun. For the way my allergy season works, it's like spring has just sprung, and we're outside all the time, and I'm loving it. Getting some vitamin D. Amen. Yeah. I was noticing. I was noticing coming down here, and maybe this is p- partially what you're experiencing. And I tried to come up with a, a, a an analogy or a word picture to help it make sense, but like. If it's a 65 degree day and you're on your fifth lemonade, that's nice, but it's way different than if you've been working and sweating in a 90 degree day and you're having your first ice cold lemonade. Mm -hmm. And I think getting out of the house this week and so it's, there's two layers. One of it is just getting out of the house because we told some friends uh, a week or so ago that I had only been to one place in two months and they were like what i haven't gone to stores i haven't sherry and the kids and i did like a service project thing where she works and that was the only time i went out in two months so that's one layer second layer is i've absolutely been buried in a work project um and all of my energy and time has been spent in this work project so i feel like an ostrich who's like popping his head out of the sand Mm mm-hmm so even on the drive down here, I was like, wow, look at the traffic. Look at this gas station. Isn't this a lovely gas station? Like every, I'm, we're at Starbucks. I'm having Starbucks for the first time in two months. Isn't this wonderful? This wonderful, everything feels heightened from those two perspectives. Yeah. Getting out of the house and then I'm just been buried in this work stuff. You were, so. you're, you've, you've been Buddy the Elf in New York City. I feel, yeah, I feel like it's that first glass of ice cold lemonade and I'm just like, this is amazing. Everything's amazing. Even that guy who cut me off in traffic is amazing. <laughs> I, just imagine, I just imagine you guys stopped at a gas station and they're starting to become impatient because you've been inside for like five minutes and they don't know what you're doing. And then the door swings open. You're like, they got snacks. <laughs> You should see what they got. Snacks. <laughs> and then the door shuts and you don't come out. You just go back in for another five minutes. <laughs> and you come out with bags full of a variety of things. It's also like that SNL sketch. I think it was Phil Hartman who did it where he was like, I'm just a caveman. I don't know anything about your fancy ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a whole new world out here, man. Man, don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> Hold your breath. It gets better. <laughs> anyway, that's how I'm feeling right now. I just feel like everything I experience is heightened. Yeah. It almost feels like, like uh, it almost sounds like a waste of vacation. Like, not that, that, that's not the right way to put it. And Sherry, if you're listening, I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, you, I mean, like, you could have you could have gone to Meyer and had that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's wait till, let's wait until like a, like a, like the newest, newest normal gets old and then yeah, then take your vacation. Yeah, it's almost like too much, too fast. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get, because now you're going to get home and you're going to be overdosed on life and you're going to get the shakes. and. Oh. 
No, you, I mean, Kendall, you know, and I think Dylan a little bit too. I've been sharing just how buried I am and had been in this work stuff. And um, no exaggeration, like all my energy, mental energy and physical energy has been going to that in 15 hour days. And it's been, it's been crazy. Um, so that I just, I feel like I'm very grateful and like even coffee out on the balcony in the mornings and reading, like every word is jumping off the page because it's something that isn't work, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just, it's a good feeling. So I feel very, very grateful to be out. <laughs> we, we went really, this is the first, I think like the first time we've been through a drive through in months. So I had my Starbucks birthday free drink and I was, you know, I'm not a cheap person, but I'm just enough that I'm like, well, it's free. It's free Starbucks. Okay. We're going to go to the drive through. Uh, I was not prepared for the level of energy of the person in the window after this many months (laughs) of (laughs) interacting with virtually no one that wasn't on a zoom call. And it was so, it, you know, cause like we still do the mask or whatever while we're paying, you know, thing to just try to be, and so just super talkative. And it's like, I really think that I've lost, if this was a video game, like my social interaction points have plummeted the last yeah. like two months. Like I was not prepared for the level of banter that this kid was like ready for. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was nice. It, you know, sometimes that happens. And when you're already in the hustle and bustle, you're a little annoyed, but like, I, it felt nice. I drove away thinking I felt a little overwhelmed, but I enjoyed it. Uh, if that makes sense. And it was literally just that. And then we like, I walked into target for a carry out order and then left and talked to one person. So it's wild, man. But, uh, I'm sure with the beach, at least you can sit on the balcony and you go down to the beach and maybe you like wave to people as you walk by them, you know, but you can still go out for a walk kind of on your own and probably ease you in a little bit. Yeah. Well, I've, I'll comment on the beach stuff. Um, but I have to segue from the Starbucks thing because on the way down here, the opposite happened. So, and I need you guys' take on this because I think I messed up, but I need to hear what you think. So, we're outside of Greensboro, North Carolina, and we stop for food at a Chick fil A. I have a story about the Chick fil A, but let me jump to the Starbucks for a second. <laughs> One thing at a time. I know. There's so many, so many, so many experiences. <laughs> guys, this is, they make chicken sandwiches and they sell them. <laughs> so, I get to the Starbucks window. And it's the opposite of Dylan's story. I'm the excited one. <laughs> and I do that thing that a lot of your uncles or dads or grandpas do where they're trying to be extra personable and everyone else at the table like or in the car rolls their eyes because you're trying to make that joke or be funny or say the waitress's name and everybody's like, oh, yeah. he's doing it again. I think that's just sometimes my way of signaling like, hey, I'm not your average customer. I'm going to make this like, fun and and like whatever so anyway i said at the window instead of just placing my order like a normal human i said hi this is my first starbucks in two months and i just want you to know i'm really excited about it (laughs) and he goes well we're really glad to see you and i'm like thanks he's like what can i get you so i place my order okay so i get up to the window and he says the rays of sunshine have shone down upon you and your drinks have been covered. But he said that through a mask. So I heard the rays of sunshine, <laughs> your drinks have been covered as I'm putting the drinks in the car. Yeah. And I think what I was supposed to say was, oh, did the person in front of me hear me say that back at the speaker and cover my drinks? Or do you have like an allotment of drinks you're allowed to give every day? And I was so excited that you just gave them to me. Cause I had like $15 of drinks. Instead, what I said was cool. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, so was that on a monopia or did you actually save room to the guy? <laughs> I'm like, Sherry goes, no, I think 
like someone must have paid for our drinks and you're supposed to like pay it forward and it just stopped with you because <laughs> i said it loud enough at the window that i think maybe the person in front of me heard me say it's my first starbucks in two months i'm so excited <laughs> i really feel like had you not prefaced it at when you were ordering, you would have really let down everyone involved. Like, if you had just ordered normally and then said, cool, thanks, and took off, I think you would have seemed rude. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you were so excited, if I'm that person, I'm thinking, honestly, he was so excited to just... <laughs> he, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He couldn't even... He was just ready to go. Like, he was amped and just took off. And I think... I think you saved yourself by your silly preface. You know what? If I'm, I was not putting myself in the moment until Dylan started doing, saying that. And I agree. If I'm there in the moment and it's, it's because of your excitement level that like, I would have been like, cause my goal wasn't that you would pay it forward necessarily. Like uh, my goal and my hope would be like, man, let's make this special for this guy. And so you became you became the needy one, who <laughs> <laughs> who was helped, um, whose day was made that much better. And so it was it was almost like it was almost like like you were the one who was at the end of the line of the pay it forward <laughs> thing that everybody was hoping would. <laughs> well, I'm glad I was the end because it stopped with me. <laughs> you didn't disappoint anybody because you were so enthusiastic. <laughs> If anything, people just felt sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Okay. So you, but so a couple of things happened. One is like when somebody says something to you and you know you hear it, but you have to go, wait, what? And then without them even saying it again, you've put it together. Like it was that delayed understanding of what he was saying. Okay. And then it was me also trying to figure out because my assumption was that the Starbucks covered it. Or that it's COVID-19 and they were literally covering the drinks. <laughs> Based on what I said at the window, my understanding was like they have five freebies a day and they just chose to use it on me. <clears throat> Not that it was another customer. Right. But you don't know the answer to that question. But I don't know the answer to that question because I was already halfway around the Starbucks. Yeah. He might have even handed them to you and said, just kidding. It's going to be $15. <laughs> yeah, you didn't give him time. That, that's, and you, you just died to that. You didn't even die was, in that. The dashed. whole thing was a misunderstanding that he was referring to the fact that like they're all covering up their faces and making sure that your drinks are covid free when he's handing them over that's something right. that like he has to tell people now these days <laughs> and you stiffed him <laughs> yep and we were almost we were almost back on the highway and i told sherry well i'm gonna be thinking about this for two weeks <laughs> <laughs> anyway that was that funny. Aside, we could talk about the etiquette there like what is un unless uh, unless you've got a, a situation did you did, have we talked about this I've had this conversation okay. recently. What's the, the, the etiquette? Pay it forward etiquette? Yeah. Okay, before you go there, yeah, yeah. we are absolutely trendsetters on this podcast. I have to say this. Okay, so Matt D'Elia, Chris D'Elia's brother, has a podcast called Matt D'Elia is Confused. And the other day, he was talking about the etiquette of merging into traffic. Uh -huh. So then on Bobby Lee's podcast, I forget if it was Bad Friends or tiger belly that he does with his girlfriend, Kalila, he was talking about mama's fish house and how hard it is to get a table at mama's fish house in Maui. And that's the story I was telling you guys after we got back. And then Pete and Sebastian were talking about the etiquette of paying it forward and what you're supposed to do in that situation. Cause you kind of want to know how much the person's is behind you. Cause you know, your luck, it would be there getting lunch for their entire crew on exactly. the construction site. Yeah. So we're so relevant culturally. I just wanted to point that out. But anyway, let's talk about it. Indeed we are. So so that wasn't you guys. I get, man, very few people that I actually have conversations with. So if it wasn't you guys, it was it was the our small group for church that I was talking about this. But it must have been them if it wasn't you all. And what was the what was the what were your findings? I don't remember. Um <clears throat> 
I think uh, I think basically that no, you shouldn't feel obligated. That's that's the wrong feeling to have. Um, but uh, yeah, I do kind of feel like it's this moment where society has a little. There's a little magic of Disney in the air, and people are feeling extra generous, and it starts. And then yeah. if you don't continue it, just like I didn't, it stops with you, and then magic dies, and you're the one that killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you take – let's play off of your situation for hypothetically for a second, though. If you had pulled up and not done any of the over-the-top, I'm excited to be here stuff, and you just said, I want an Amer- ice Americano, and that was it, and they're like, four dollars and whatever i can just assume that's the price and you just pull up and then it happened and you said cool thanks now you've detracted from the <laughs> forward you're like we said your enthusiasm sort of made up for it there because you were the person at the end of the receiving line all right you made, you made it feel good that like but man this yeah had you not been so enthusiastic up front i think etiquette you would have needed to stay and say, wait, was that the person ahead of me? Or you might have needed to figure out a little bit to, hey, who do, who do I thank for this? <laughs> you could have at least needed to take that moment. I think you got a pass because how you handled the beginning. But I think in that situation, if you're acting normal and there's no reason that someone's treating you, then you should at least try to figure out who to thank. Is, is the bare minimum. You you got out of it, but I think, <laughs> I think that's the bare Okay, so in normal circumstances, the pay it forward thing, do you ever start it randomly? So will you ever be at a Tim Hortons and you're just like, I'm having a great day. And for nobody paid for yours, but you're like, hey, can I just go ahead and pay for the persons behind me? Have you ever started that or do you ever start that? I've never experienced it one way or the other. I've never started it. I've never had it really? happen to me. Yeah. It happens yeah, regularly I, in our little town. I, I would say the same. I, do you think it's rude like to have a price limit on your happiness? <laughs> you spread it to say, I, hey, I, to look at sounds... the person you've paid and you still got the card in your hand and you go, <laughs> hey, how much is the person's behind <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and they're, they're gonna know exactly why you're asking. Either they'll assume that you know them, or they'll think you're trying to do the pay it forward thing. I don't. Yeah, I think most of those people are are paid minimum wage and are gonna go. It's eight seventy five, and they go, "Great, here's my card. Go ahead and pick theirs up." Or they go, "It's forty eight seventy five and go, "Oh, okay, never mind." <laughs> bye bye. So that's what Pete and. So- that's what Pete and Sebastian said. Wouldn't it be funny if the person's behind you was like 1850 and you covered 10 of it? <laughs> yeah. Cause then they're like, wait a minute. I still got to pay. 850. Yeah. Yeah. That's an all or nothing thing. I think I would though, appreciate that. Even I was just going to say, even though if it were me and mine was 1850 and I pulled up and they're like, Hey, it was 1850, but now it's 850. And I know that there's no, this isn't like I found a coupon at Taco Bell, right? Like, I yeah. know there's a reason it should be discounted. I'd still be thrilled, but that feels weird and cheap if you're discussing <laughs> theoretically to not just go, yeah, just <laughs> throw it on with the rest of my debt on my credit card and just put the full 1850 on there. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so let, let's just wrap up the Starbucks story. So my wife is, is in the condo and overheard me telling the story and says I said it completely wrong. First of all, when we got up to the speaker, the guy himself was so over the top with his, hi, welcome to Starbucks. He was very spirited, let's yes. put it that way, that he triggered my over the topness. Okay, okay. Secondly, she's convinced that the person in front of us paid. The last thing she wants to point out is all $15 of those drinks were for me. <laughs> that is funny because the implication was it was the car full of your family yes. and it was $15, which I'm thinking, okay, that's like three drinks at Starbucks, like, you know, four or $5 a piece. Okay. You Sherry and the kids are sharing something that does add to the that a, is. Little, a little bit of flavor. <laughs> do you guys watch Key and Peel at all? 
A little bit. There's there's this one segment that they do. I don't know the name, but of a it's it's a, a large man who's sitting by himself in his house and calls a pizza place <laughs> and he's ordering an obscene amount of pizza for one person. And so like you just see you just see him sitting in his house like pretending to talk to other people, pretending to ask them what they <laughs> want on their pizza. And, Are you guys yeah. good with sausage? Yeah, they say they're good with sausage. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, used you, to feel bad when Sherry and I would get take out Chinese that they would throw in like six fortune cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just the two of us. Yeah. Uh you just described me being single for a long time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you could feel bad about the quantity of food you'd ordered, because we've ordered enough like, ooh, this pizza place has chicken wings, and I'll get you a pizza, and then I kind of want my own, but do we want breadsticks or salad or do we want a dessert pizza? And then they send like 15 plates cause they just assume that it has to be for that many yeah. people. <laughs> and you're like, Oh, okay. This isn't, this is an uh, enormous amount of food to order. But yeah. You got to figure that they like know better. Like, I don't know that, that, <laughs> that key and peel sketch by the, by the way ends with, uh, with the, the pizza guy on the other end, falling in love with this fake woman that the guy made up because like i don't know why <laughs> like her pizza choice was like his love match or something and uh and so he was gonna come over and try to meet her and it ends with this guy like having to fake the fact that she was shot and killed <laughs> and <laughs> we'll share that from our from our uh, facebook page That's i funny. love i'm i'm a key and peel fan I love all of their free content that you can find on YouTube and I've never watched any of the paid stuff. And, uh, that's not anything against them. It's that I've never watched any of the paid stuff really anywhere. Support the artists. <laughs> they get ad revenue. They get ad revenue because I'm one of the, one of the views. Right on. I don't feel guilty about that. I'd feel guilty if I were like, you know, ripping off MP3s, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> So what else is going on with you cats? Well, you got to finish the Chick-fil-A story now, though. It's not that great now. We spent too much time on Starbucks. <laughs> Otherwise, this is just going to be Corey and Cherry and the family's trip to North Carolina, and that's not what we're here for. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, I have to say, uh, so I asked a couple weeks ago uh, on Facebook, Bree and I were flipping through different movies on different uh, streaming apps and the Downton Abbey movie was on there and we had never watched any of the series and yeah, collective gasp. And, uh, and so I, yeah, I asked on social media, Hey, is the Downton Abbey, a Downton Abbey movie standalone enough or is it kind of spoiled if you haven't watched the show? And it was like a unanimous 20 response. Nobody said, watch the movie. Everyone said, watch the show. So, which was fine. It was one of those, we'll get around to it eventually, but committing to a movie versus committing to the series is two very different things. Right. So anyways, we're on season six now. And it's a very good. Uh, we've, we've been binging that one quite nicely. So we're going to get to that movie a little bit faster than we thought we were going to. Because <laughs> uh, I, I only asked on social media literally like two weeks ago. Uh, and, uh, and so here we are. So that's basically been our free time after the kiddo goes to bed. It's either animal crossing or binging, uh, Downton Abbey. So that's, that's what we've been up to, but you're still working from home. So nothing, nothing crazy there. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm texting my wife right now. So we, uh, speaking of TV stuff, first of all, you said you're on season six. I'm currently on season six of The Blacklist, but I, I started that like months ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but my viewership has has ramped up ever since the, the uh, uh, season finale for season seven, which they decided to animate um, because they, they couldn't record due to COVID. And... Uh, and so, like, I've been really wanting to get to that. But the dilemma that I run into is season seven is the current season, right? The finale just aired, uh, which means it is not on Netflix yet. I can only get through season six on Netflix. Season seven, I I could 
purchase on Amazon Prime if I wanted to. The question is, do I pull that trigger to buy a season of a show that, like, the way I watch things, I'm never going to go back and watch any of it. It doesn't matter how much I love it. I'm going to watch each episode exactly one time. There's no rent option? No, I don't think so. Yeah, that's tough. I don't think I'd pull the trigger on it. I think I'd wait. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is how they get people to pay like $35. On a it's season. like Troll, Trolls World Tour comes out and everyone pays twenty four ninety nine to rent it. Wow, you know? yeah. That's why that happens. Because they're skipping the theaters. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Actually, it, Technically, if you do the math, it is cheaper to rent it for twenty four ninety nine than to take more than two people to see it at the theater. However, yeah, yeah. It, it still feels like a lot. Cost cost benefit is not they they have not come down far enough for my cost benefit on those. So watching, we're talking about watching, you know, premiered movies at home because but nobody can go to theaters, and so and so production companies, film companies, whatever are making deals with uh with the amazon primes of the world you said twenty dollars for the whole season i don't know how much it is it's something like that is my guess right around 20 is what they tend to be it's tough it is tough good, good luck my to guess you. is i'll wait and i'll watch something else for a while but like we just got netflix back um this was like back in march maybe i don't mm-hmm. remember february possibly because of tiger king because the t- Tiger King was was a big part of that decision, yeah. And so, like, I my my first intention was I just want to I want to like make sure I kind of binge watch the things I want from Netflix, and then and then we'll dump it again. Um, but now I'm not sure I want to because with Amazon Prime, uh, it used to be when I first got into Blacklist, I got into it because it was free on Amazon Prime. None of it is free anymore on Amazon Prime. So if I dump Netflix, then I then I would never be able to watch season seven for free. Versus I keep Netflix, and in a year I probably get to watch it for free. Probably. So that's where I am. But watching things with your spouse, um, Amy and I just watched for her the first time for me like the fourth time, uh, the Rise of Skywalker. Mm. Hey. That was just a few days ago. How's it settling? What's that? How's it settling? How's it settling? She likes it. So I was, I was actually just texting with her. I was like, quick, tell me your thoughts. Um, she says she loved it. And then we had had a conversation before about how like she has all these questions that, uh, that, and I mean, a lot of people do have these questions that kind of bug them. Um, but for her, like she's finding out, and I'm, I'm kind of proud of her that she has the same kinds of questions that Star Wars geeks have. Uh, she doesn't have any theories. But for example, where did Palpatine come from? Like she wants to see a movie about that. She wants to. One thing that we had talked about was like we wouldn't mind seeing some content that that covers Ray's parents, and because now we know that there's there's a story there somehow. Like her dad. Did he defect, or did they adopt her, or or what, or what happened there? Like, there's there's a story there that she's not, you know, an evil Palpatine. Um, her father, or somebody her father knew, broke the cycle, and so there's, I mean, there's like an epic story there. Anyway, I did think it was funny. I saw. It was a tweet or Facebook post or something from a Star Wars official channel. And it's, it was one of those, like, did you know? And they inserted, they inserted some facts from the Rise of Skywalker that nobody knew because it wasn't in the movie with some picture artwork they wanted to show off or something. And uh, one of the top comments below was, no, we didn't because you didn't explain any of that in the movie. <laughs> like, why would we have known? <laughs> the things I made up and then didn't explain. And as much as I enjoyed the movie, I did think it was a funny comment. Like, no, because the thing you said, you just made up and then released it. 
and we had no idea. Because, like, the movie wasn't even out to buy yet, so nobody was watching the behind the scenes or any of that to yeah. know any little tidbits. It was pretty fun. <laughs> well, that's good. Amy likes Rise of Skywalker. Uh, for the Midlers who hate Star Wars, we don't have to, to live in that anymore, but I'm glad to hear that she likes it. Unless there were other thoughts, she was texting you about it. Uh, I mean, that, that was basically it. She had... She said, I hope they make uh, movies about Ray's parents. Uh, she said, uh, and who was the lady who was Ray's grandma? What did she, ta- she, talking does she about just mean the, Does she just mean the old lady? At the end? At the end on, te- on uh, Scarif. Let me see Not if she Scarif. responds back. For Tatooine. On Tatooine, no. yeah. At the very end yeah, of the movie. Yeah, on Tatooine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she says, I'm Ray Skywalker. We don't know any. Asking her. We're, we're waiting yeah, if, for- if that's who you're talking about, Amy, we don't know the answer. I just texted her again. She's probably sleeping. That's my guess. <laughs> nope, nope. She's coming up. No, she says no. <laughs> and who was the lady who was Ray's grandma? Or is she just asking who was, was interested in Palpatine enough? <laughs> <laughs> wrinkles <laughs> all <laughs> yes so who who got to be the lucky one to experience palps in a way that although to be fair, i did hear somebody suggest that you don't know <laughs> how long a pregnancy some alien races might have it could have dated back all the way to like when he was a senator or the chancellor before he was scary palps. Well, I mean, I would say he was much more attractive. <laughs> well, at least powerful. I mean, there's always people attracted yeah, to that's, that. That's true. Hey, maybe it's... I don't know. <laughs> taking a weird turn here. <laughs> that is taking a weird turn. <laughs> maybe it's Queen Amidala. Maybe. <laughs> mm. Not Natalie Portman. No. <laughs> We'll have got more. We'll have got him, Star Wars. Got, got him old and then got him young. We'll have more uh, Star Can't Wars. Can't be with anyone her own age. Anyway. We'll have more Star Wars news in the future uh, on other episodes because they're casting uh, some important people as live action characters that have only appeared as animated characters. So we'll see uh, as we talk more Mandalorian 2, I'm sure, at some point. Season 2, that'll be fun to talk about. Yeah. Hey, here's an update. So Case, my five-year-old son, has started his own podcast. Yeah. (laughs) That's cute. So somehow he got one of our old phones, which won't even turn on. Yeah. And he plugs in. It started with him just plugging headphones into it Mm -hmm. and him walking around the house. Okay. Black screen doesn't turn on. Just right. Yeah, yeah, no. I love it. I love it. So then he said something to Sherry because he was talking and she said, What are you doing? And he said, I'm just talking on my podcast. <laughs> and something about the episodes, like he was on episode five or something. Yeah. And I kind of heard some of this in the midst of the crazy work stuff I described before. But then. He came down this, this was the cutest. He came down the stairs one time, which, which is right next to my office door. And I heard him go, okay, guys, I'm back. It's Case. So anyways. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. Oh, so, what, so, he's, so he started his own podcast. What's his, what's his podcast about? <laughs> I have no idea. That's as much as I know. Oh, man. I haven't there, talked to him about it There's yet. a From the Littles. He'll be a great host. Exactly, yeah. I, my kids do YouTube videos like they uh, they pretend to be they'll start narrating their their lives and like you'll hear them say like don't forget to subscribe <laughs> oh to subscribe yeah oh, in ca- that in case is calling it podcasting I was just podcasting <laughs> which is which is what it's called but um right uh, so Lily too the 13 year old the one that actually listens to the episodes um, I think she's in the 20s or something 
And she came in the other day with a piece of printer paper and written in pencil is like 15 questions, hashtag thoughts from the middle. Like she wants to ask us questions. Nice. So maybe um, I didn't bring the list with me, but maybe um, sometime soon I'll throw in some of her questions for topic ideas. I stand unopposed. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're clearly desperate for material. We just did 23 minutes on Starbucks drive throughs so. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Look, this stuff is gold, all right? This is what we have <laughs> in our lives. Amen. <laughs> it's relatable. I walked into Target. I had stepped into a store in months, and I walked into a Target. That's a thing that I have to think about now. How did yeah. that feel? It was fine. Yeah. It was fine. No, it was, yeah, it was good. I We're still doing like... Uh, if you can do a, a pay online pickup in store, we do that. But we yeah. had only been ordering stuff from online and we're like, let's just go get it. So yeah, it's a thing. I had, I had a less enthusiastic person than the Starbucks drive through. So I handled it fine. <laughs> <laughs> there was no meltdowns. I didn't say cool. Thanks and run away. Oh, I'm in the back. <laughs> you didn't kill any magic. It acted like a mostly normal person. So <laughs> Good for you. Are yeah. you doing a mask? Are you doing the mask thing? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, I, I think we fall in the camp that it's, you know, it's, it's considerate for us and considerate for others. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. No big deal. Uh, it's not a big, in our, in our view, it's not a big ask to throw that on and walk in somewhere and grab something and leave. Sure. So. I will <laughs> tell you what, like I've been, so during all of this, Amy has done, um, virtually almost all of the, the grocery shopping. Uh, and she just goes after work because she's wearing quote unquote contaminated clothes anyway. Right. And, uh, and then she comes home and changes clothes. But um, <clears throat> I went to Kroger once, like toward the very beginning of all this. And then I went to Meyer like a few weeks ago. And that's a big deal for you. You were ready to walk around to Meyer. I was. Yeah. And so, um, it was longer than a few weeks ago. I don't know, whatever it was. My wife will correct me when she listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wore, I did not wear a mask the, the time I went into Kroger. I did wear a mask for that trip to Meyer, And even that was like, a, I'm desperate and I need, I need to go somewhere and do something. And so it was just, I did the grocery shopping that day. And so it wore a mask for like, 30 minutes maybe however long i was in there that was severely unpleasant for me i would do it again like I, we are we are also team mask um it's just it's just not a big deal for us to do it except i will acknowledge the unpleasantness of it for me anyway it, it was like so i don't know maybe you can tell me if this happens to you uh so i feel like i had this mask on and for me it was like a respirator style mask and um, so I, so I felt like it was even better because I didn't have like anything like pushing down on my nose or anything. And uh, but still, it's like there's a warm environment there which I don't like. And and like I can't, I never really got used to that. And then I feel like that warm environment just like cooks everything that's inside your nose, and then and then my nose starts running. And then what do you do? what do you do when your nose starts running when you're wearing a mask that you can't take off? And so, yeah, Dylan, what you just did, you can't do that. <laughs> there's no face touching, not taking the mask off. Um, and so I've, I've found that to be uh, at one point in time, like toward the, I, I remember I was in the checkout and, and like uh, my nose was ran to the point where like I felt it coming down my mustache. And then, like, reached my lip, and I'm just like, "Oh man!" Tasted the the salty goodness of of my <laughs> snot drip down onto my lip, <laughs> and it was like, man, I could not get to the car fast enough. Uh, that's my. Is it just me? <laughs> well, okay. So I wasn't gonna mention, you know, because the mask I think is important right now for everyone's comfort. Yes, I, I will do gonna, it again. I will do it again in a heartbeat. I was going to try not to complain about it, but it was funny. So I ran in 
in an attempt to, to save some of the money spent on delivery fees, I figure I'll just go, we'll pay online. I'll go get our subs tonight. So we did Jersey Mike's and I, I'll run in. Everyone's got like a table where you can just go grab your food and go. Right. Well, I didn't push my, it has like the metal band or whatever you can kind of yeah, form. I, yeah. I did right. Long story short, it's a thick mask. Every breath is just like vibrating inside, but there's a hole like right here <laughs> by my nose. So it's shooting a heavy stream of air. And it's like, it feels like it's not because it's not how my body works, but it feels <laughs> like my eye, it's blowing enough air. It's flapping my eyelid like a curtain in the window. <laughs> on a breezy summer day and it was driving me crazy. I felt like every breath it was like, <laughs> oh, man. and my eyelids just, it's not. I wonder, it I wonder, if everybody, little... wonder if everybody that you made eye contact with thought that you were hitting on them. I <laughs> had this like cartoonish eyelashes. Thank goodness. There was like one customer and two employees and I was standing far enough away from all of them that, I'm sure they couldn't hear me talking through the mask or see my face. Uh, just, but it, it was like fluttering my eyelid. It was driving me nuts. Just do what I've seen a very large portion of people doing, which is wear the mask over only your mouth and leave your <laughs> nose out. <laughs> yeah. What's going I'm, on with that? We've all I'm gonna seen just, the I'm memes. i to save myself the weird breathing and just do this. <laughs> And just walk around with a slit, my hand over my mouth with a slit where my mouth is. Won't cover my nose or mouth. I'll just do that. Off the island, there's like one grocery store food lion. And we go into the food lion and all we've seen zero people in North Carolina that were not workers at a gas station or, or supermarket wearing masks. But all those people have masks. So everyone... It, that works at Food Lion has a mask, but a lot of teenage kids and most of them have it over only their mouth, their nose is exposed. <laughs> it's that whatever the meme or the that's not how this works. That's not <laughs> how any of this works. I, comes. Think, I think we all want to mention a meme that we're not mentioning for <laughs> for for reasons because 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 of Lily. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and folks and folks potentially her age yeah that's funny um <laughs> oh what else what else guys so oh i mentioned cooking i want to talk about I've, I've been super excited about grilling are you guys into grilling do you guys i you love grill? it love it i are love you, other grilling for me i enjoy grilling myself but i'd rather sit there and then just eat. uh dude we're gonna have when when at, at some point i'm gonna grill for you dylan we can social distance grill outside we totally can and we should i like grilling i like cooking all together and i like cooking for people so um are you a are you a, a gas guy or a charcoal guy both so it's all food it's the food well, in what, the end what do you do at home like what do you have? Well, see, we don't we don't have a traditional grill. So like I have a griddler right now that I'm using in my kitchen okay. as my grill right now. But Gotcha. Yeah, eventually I'll have a nice big whatever, but right now I don't. We're just so like I have become a tried and true like straight normal everyday kettle Weber charcoal grill and that's like all I ever want now. It's a, a, I just I don't know, I love it. There's there's like some cool little tricks that you can do with one of those that you can't do with other grills, um, but uh, I'm not I'm not a charcoal snob, but I'm a huge charcoal fan. And I tell you what, man, we've had chicken quarters twice recently. We've had obviously we've done hot dogs and sausages and stuff. We had we had barbecue pork today. Mm. Uh, uh, all kinds of other things. We had salmon one day, grilled salmon. Ooh. I'm trying to look up. There was a really good documentary on Netflix that was about cooking, and it was like the the elements in the way they relate to cooking. Salt, salt, S salt, heat, something. salt, fat, acid, heat. Well, there, there's a couple. It was the elements, though, specifically. Salt, fat, acid, heat. That was one. Yeah. Sherry loved that. 
is that the one where they're cooking in like a backyard and a grill right after they make bread inside? Yep. Was it that? Is that the documentary? So yeah. good. Um, yes, she highly recommends it. What What is this again? And that might Salt, not be fat, acid, heat. That's the name of the thing? It's four oh. parts. It's well, like that, one's, four part. that one's good, but that's not the one I'm talking about because this was a male host. <clears throat> but watch that one too. I'll think of it and we'll post it on From the Middle uh, Facebook page. But this one was specifically the elements. So earth, wind, air, fire, whatever. Uh, and okay. how they were how they relate to cooking and there's a whole episode where they're like you know they're making bread and they're talking about how air impacts whatever and then the next one they're grilling and they've got and and they talk about it in nature and then they talk about it in like a more modern kitchen so like how does how does it apply when it's like an aboriginal person in australia who's using these elements to cook and then what does that look like in a modern sense yeah and it catch it was it's super good. We'll, I'll I'll find it. We'll post it on. Is it cooked? It might be. I'm trying uh, to look. I wonder it. if maybe that's like without ignoring maybe that's why I like grilling so much. That it, without that ignoring that, me, I'm trying to look it up. And maybe grilling and maybe even specifically grilling with charcoal is just like a and just seems like an ultra primal thing. When there's no other there's no other circumstance which yeah. I would use wind to grill. So when I'm using like a Weber grill, like you can like I'm like cooked. reading. Can you see it? Cooked. 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 Kind of. Yeah, check out cooked. But the other one's good too. Salt, acid, fire, whatever, heat, whatever. But yeah, check out cooked. There's only four episodes. It's super good. <clears throat> and we'll share the link or share the IMDB page or whatever for for both of them from the from the middle uh, social page. I just took notes with a pencil about it. Hey, you've got Netflix now. You might as well watch these docs while you can. I know. I know. There's also, I mean, there's so much comedy that I've missed out on too. I'm going to finish up Blacklist before I move on to anything else, but Speaking of comedy, has anyone indulged Space Force, Space Force yet with Steve Carell? I saw that it just dropped. Is have you? No, no. It's apparently kind of mixed reviews, but generally positive, and it's more drama. It's they're kind of touting it as like from the creators of The Office and Steve Carell. But yeah, I think that's what it's I was expecting. Much more drama than it is comedy. Uh. Um, but overall, the reception seems to be good. It that dropped because we're binging Downton, and we don't want to like we want to just keep chugging along on Downton Abbey. But that and I really we really like Somebody Feed Phil on Netflix. Uh, which is just really lighthearted and fun food show if you like that. But season three of Somebody Feed Phil and Space Force dropped at the same time. So my queue was empty, and now I've got a couple things in it. So I'm yeah. going to have to – maybe stay, we'll talk about it. Stay on top of it, man. <sighs> it's don't, get... don't let what – learn from your past, brother. Don't, <laughs> don't, right. let, don't <laughs> let what happened before. Don't, you don't want to end up clearing out your queue again, man. I don't want to have to do that 400 titles later. These are things I 100% know I will watch, so I'm not concerned. There you go. I'm really behind on a lot of things, including wrestling. I'm like three and a half, four weeks behind on, on uh, wrestling. Yeah, more than yeah. that, man. I, yeah. I, I tapped it's out. hard. Like three weeks into them being at the training center. I, I just, it's hard to watch with no fans. Yeah. I'll come back, though. Like I'll be back. And I'll, maybe I'll maybe I'll binge it just to catch up on the storyline, but I doubt it. I think I'll just jump in and and figure it out as I go. It's tough. First world problems. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. We don't have enough time to watch all the shows we want to watch. Yeah. <sighs> all right, fellas. It's so good to catch up with you guys. I just forgot we were recording. <laughs> like I, I'm just I smiling know. and looking at Here's your faces. A- like. Corey, you're gonna say something over there? <laughs> Sorry. Did you go to Chick-fil-A I'm just enjoying or something? Vis- I'm just enjoying visiting with you guys. Everything's amazing. <laughs> I think it's just the wine. Mm-mm. It's fine. Nobody listens this far into the episodes, anyways. Uh, this is a rare. <laughs> this is a rare. I believe it's pronounced Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you really are in North Carolina, aren't you? Yep. Sure is. Love it. Love it. That's no, good. Hunting shark's teeth. Yeah. The best. That's it. That's it, man. St- I think he I think he stopped I think he stopped north of the line of where Kendall will never go. <laughs> Maybe. I don't it's, know. It's it's really cool here. It's not too hot yet, so you guys would love it. Good. It's perfect cool. time. We'll see you in the morning. Yep. All right. Anything else, guys? I'm good. I think I'm good. All right. All right. All right. Good catching up. Hey guys, it is it is good catching up with you. Um uh, as always, it sounds like we're begging and pleading for people to interact with us, and that's because we like you. And we want you to like us. And so just do it. Swoosh. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying if you, if you go, if you ever, if you, if you're, you're listening to this on your little podcast thing on your little phone. And, uh, if you click somewhere or scroll down or something, depending on, on what app you're using to listen to this thing, you'll find the description that'll be talking about this podcast and the things that are in this podcast. Go down a little further, a little further down. A little further down. You making fun of me, Riz? A little further down. <laughs> and there'll be a little thing. It's a link that says, you know, click here to leave us a voice message or something like that, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Click on click on that thing. Hey, you know what? Jim Taylor left us a voice message the other day. And so, you know, we'll have that some sometime soon. And so if you want to be someone who leaves us a voice message, then click that thing and leave us a voice message. And then if we deem it appropriate unless you ask us something that's like way outside of the scope of what it is we actually talk about here (laughs) which has happened Uh, we'll uh we'll air it we'll talk about it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. like us on the social media we've got a middlers group going in the facebook's we've got stuff we're on the youtubes and the twitters and the instagram that's right Woof. Woof. All kinds of stuff. You can fax us. Yeah. Fax numbers somewhere. Yeah. Just Google. Google the words fax number. Just yeah. ask Jeeves. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what's up. Yep. All, All right, right, guys. Good catch you. Love you. This has been From the Middle. We appreciate it. Love you later. Bye. See you, bye.